Hi friends, welcome to ARC Tutorials. Today, this is the first part of the expert Angular interview series. So we have brought uh, previous uh, episodes where we have seen a lot of success. A lot of you have been asking about a complete detailed interview question and answers on Angular. So I have compiled more than 200 questions on expert Angular interview series. This covers from simple to most advanced questions. And I'm sure that you can crack any Angular interview after going through this series. This is a multi-part series and this is the first part of it. So if you really want to crack the Angular interview, I suggest you kindly go through all the parts that we'll publish and that will help you prepare for any interview. Let's get started. So I can guarantee you that you can crack any Angular interview that you are preparing for. This is, there is a collection of over 200 interview questions ranging from simple to tough in this series. It has been a lot of hard work in compiling these questions. So please subscribe and like my videos to keep supporting and encouraging me. This is for good for beginners as well as for experienced professionals. If you have any doubts in any part of the series, any section, just ask me. I would be happy to help you for free. Let's get started with Angular Top Interview Question and Answers Expert Series, Part 1. So first question is, what is Angular Framework? So Angular is a TypeScript-based open source front-end platform that makes it easy to build applications within web, mobile, and desktop. The major features of this framework are declarative templates, dependency injection, end-to-end -end testing, and much, much more features which makes it easy for faster and easier development of applications. So make sure always the first question, how you answer will set the tone for rest of your um, interview. So, so prepare these first few initial questions really well. Now, what is the difference between Angular JS and Angular? So this is an interesting question that is asked to see whether you have really worked on Angular or not. So if you are a beginner, Make sure you understand the concepts and the difference between Angular and Angular JS really well. So Angular is a completely revived component-based approach in which an application has a tree of individual components. So the differences between Angular and Angular JS are listed here. Angular JS is based on MVC architecture, whereas Angular is a completely component-driven. This uses JavaScript to build the application. Angular uses TypeScript. AngularJS is based on controllers concept. Angular is a component-based UI approach. AngularJS is not mobile-friendly frame framework, whereas Angular was developed considering mobile-first platform. With AngularJS, it is difficult to have SEO-friendly application development. Whereas with Angular, it's easy to create SEO friendly applications. Now the next question that comes is, what is TypeScript? So TypeScript is a typed superset of JavaScript created by Microsoft that adds optional types, classes, async weight, many other features that, that and compiles to plain JavaScript. Angular is built come entirely in TypeScript and is used as a primary language. Now, how do you install TypeScript? We can install TypeScript by the command npm install hyphen g, that is install globally TypeScript. So what are the key components of Angular? So some of the key components of Angular are components. Those are the basic building blocks of Angular framework. And then you have modules. An Angular module is a set of Angular basic building blocks like components, directives, services, etc. Now, the next uh, important component are templates, and then you have routing, and then there is services, there is metadata. So, all these are the important components of Angular which we will need to create our powerful web application. So if you have worked on any Angular project, you will notice that all of these are mandatory. You will use them at some point or other in order to create your application. 
The next question is what are directives? So directives add behavior to existing DOM element or an existing component instance. So for example, if you want to add certain behavior to a component or an element, we can create our own directives. Now here in the example, you can see we are creating a directive using at the rate directive decorator and we are calling it selector as my highlight. Now this is this is just adding a background color. So it's a simple directive which is in the constructor. It's adding a background color as yellow. And how do we use that is simple. We can just call it in the in the directive in the element as paragraph. You can see my highlight. So that's how we can simply call any directive. Now see so this is an important question. So remember friends, let's go through it again just to make sure that you understand the concept correctly. Here the, the import the meaning of directive is that it is used to extend the behavior. So that is what you have to convey. And here in this particular example, what we are doing is we are telling it to put the background color as yellow. Now that that itself is a directive. And how do we call it? We call it by just uh, putting the paragraph and then passing the directive, just like an attribute. We'll cover more uh, in detail about directives when we come there, but this is a good starting point for you to understand. All right. So the next question is what are components? Components are the most basic UI building blocks of an Angular application through which a, it, a tree of Angular components is formed in a hierarchical way. These components are subset of directives. Unlike directives, components always have a template and only one component can be instantiated per element. So this is important. Uh, you can be asked multiple times, can you have multiple instances or how many uh, elements can be there per component? So the answer is only one always a component can be instantiated per element is only one. Now a simple component um, when you generate using angular CLI you'll see that you'll have a template file you'll have a test file and you'll have uh, this is the standard structure that you can see here so you can go through this simple example which is just printing angular learn angular 6 or 7 9 11 with examples so uh, that's a simple text and a simple component uh, that's about it so to recap, components are the most building blocks, important building blocks in Angular application. They will form a hierarchy of tree and these components are subset of directives. So what are the differences between component and directive? This is a very, very important question. They want to see your understanding and they also want to see that you have actually implemented it. So this is an important question. A component is a directive with a template. You can, if you just say that, they'll understand you have some knowledge on it. So a component is a directive with a template. Some of the major differences are mentioned in a tabular form. A component, to register a component, we'll use the at the rate component metadata. Directive is used at the rate directive decorator. Components are typically used to create UI widgets whereas directive is used to create behavior or functionality. Components is used to break up the application into smaller components. Directive is used to design reusable components and features. Only one component can be present per DOM element, whereas a directive can be, can many directives can be used per DOM element. View decorator or template URL are mandatory directive doesn't come with a template so go through these differences again friends ask me if you have any doubts just drop them in the comment section i'll be happy to provide you for free now what is a template a template is a html view where you can display data by binding controls to properties of an angular component you can store your components template in one of two places Either you can define an inline template or you can define a separate HTML file and just link it using template URL. 
So basically template is your view that appears the HTML, the CSS, all that jazzy stuff of UI is in a template. Now, how do you define an inline template syntax? So here the difference is important is in how we call the template. So if you see here, we are having at the rate component and selector my app, and then, then we have template. So since we are putting a simple template, it is right here in inline within the component. So div h1 tag did div div, right? So this is a simple template, so I can put it here. But when you when your template size increases, you don't want to have it in the component. So what we can do is the next question. So remember inline template is nothing but when you have your HTML template and view written inside the component, it becomes inline template. Now define template URL syntax. So this is where I was saying that when you have a large view or more HTML that you want to put, it's a good practice to always have the HTML separated out. So if you see here, I am putting something called template URL. So this is a parameter, uh, this is the syntax. So template URL, and then you will pass the HTML file to it. So this is called template URL syntax. Now what is a module? Modules are logical boundaries in your application and the application is divided into separate modules to separate the functionality of your application. So think of it like this. If you have multiple functionalities like users, comments, likes, or say videos, or you know uh, links. So all these individually can be broken down as a separate module, which can be used, reused multiple times. So you logically bind things, in, uh, logically put multiple things into one place or group them together that becomes your module. Now take an example of app.module.ts root module declared. Now we are declaring a module using ng module. Now ng module will take multiple things as inputs like imports, declarations, bootstrap, etc. So this is a simple example of a module where you are grouping things together and telling it that this is how I want all my, uh, this here I want all my declarations, imports, bootstrap, which one to bootstrap, routing, providers, you can add a lot of things. We'll cover that later. But this is a good starting point for you to understand that a module are nothing but a logical boundaries in your application where you are grouping things together into one. Explain ng module in detail. So this is another uh, good question that is asked to see if you have created any modules or not. The ng module decorator has three options. The imports option is used to import the other dependent modules. The browser module is required by default for any web-based Angular application. So remember, this is not a custom module. This is the default module, which is ng module. So it will have a browser module. The declarations option is used to define components in the respective module. The bootstrap option tells Angular which component to bootstrap in the application. You can you can take up any native application, Angular application, and you will see that you have uh, an ng module or app module that is the good starting point for your reference. All right, so the next question comes is, what are lifecycle hooks? What are the available lifecycle hooks? So the available lifecycle hooks, so whenever Angular applications, um, there is a changes or uh, there is a set of process that happens to all the, uh, across the application, which is nothing but the phases that it goes through, or you can also call it lifecycle. So, e, the, so there are a lot of uh, stages that it goes to. So I'm listing down different lifecycle methods or hooks here. So one is ng on changes, ng on init, ng do check, ng after content init, uh, ng after content checked, ng after view init, ng after view checked, and ng on destroy. So these are the available um, lifecycle methods that a component can go through and we can use them. So there is a different, um, I would say functionality for each of it. You can go through them that I've listed here. This is an extremely important question 
please go through it. Uh, let me know if you have any doubts or queries. I can provide more examples. Just keep reading through it and prepare this question really, really well. If you're not sure, just, just read out whatever is written here in the um, slide. All right, so that brings us to end of part one. I will cover the other questions in part two and three. There are totally 11 parts of this series. If you go through each one of them, you will be able to crack any Angular interview that you're attending. That's 100% guaranteed. If you still have any doubts, any queries, drop them in the comment section. I will be happy to help you for free. Friends, I request you to kindly subscribe to my channel to keep supporting and encouraging me. Thank you so much for joining in today's episode. I'll see you in the next part of Expert Angular Interview Series Part 2. Thank you for joining.